Neil Young, Creedence Clearwater Revival, Prince, Johnny Cash, Chuck Berry, The Yardbirds, and The Stones, The Monkees, <laughs> <laughs> The Beatles. Yeah. Oh, see. <laughs> When you started playing guitar, what was the first riff you learned? What was the first song you learned? Could have been like either Wipeout or Blowing in the Wind. Those were pretty early on. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so the first riff I ever learned um, was actually from Hey Hey My My. Uh, Neil Young, and uh, I had gone over to Kevin Moore's house. Kevin Moore was the original keyboard player in Dream Theater. We were best friends growing up on Long Island. He lived right around the corner. He was uh, having a jam session, and they needed somebody to play the, uh, the guitar line. And I don't remember who taught it to me. I learned it and was struggling, couldn't play it, but it was the first thing I learned was the Neil Young riff. <laughs> The first song that I heard that made me want to learn keyboards was Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I was very young, I was in second grade, and that melody was in my head, and I walked over to the piano that was in the classroom, and I found the notes, and then my first teacher taught me some chords, and I began improvising it. first piano part I ever learned? Well, that's a tough question because, you know, I was a classically trained pianist and I didn't really start to play pop or rock or anything like that for a while. But the one that I really remember learning was the Bach Prelude in C. And the reason I remember it so much is because this was the piece that I prepared for Juilliard when I was nine years old. Actually, preparation began when I was eight years old. So I learned it. I went into Juilliard, I played it for my teacher, I started to improvise, and she freaked out because improvisation was not allowed at Juilliard. But this was the piece. One riff that I found really tricky is uh, Day Tripper with uh, the Beatles. Oh. Just like. And I, I found it really difficult to get it right with open strings and all that. But it, it was good practice. Someone asked me uh, to illustrate a couple of things that made me want to pick up the bass and start playing. So. For me, that was, uh, since I'm an old guy, I started very, <laughs> very young. Uh, the Yardbirds. Now, uh, a lot of people toss the name around as this iconic band, and not many people really know a lot about the Yardbirds, or even can name a lot of their songs. But they were one of the foundation bands that started a lot of music we have today. And, but they had a bass player. His name was Paul Samuel Smith, and he was an amazing bass player. And he gets overlooked a lot because, he, because of Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page, and Eric Clapton. <laughs> But he had well, this one a riff. It's in the wrong key because I got a different tune bass here. But it was a, a song called Lost Woman. And that was, uh, at the time, about 66. That was... Ingve of bass. And no one could even imagine how anybody could play a bass line like that. Paul McCartney, of course, uh, from the Beatles, was, uh, was a huge uh, thing for me. Again, tuned differently, but uh, the, the, the song Rain. Really 
great uh, baseline. And uh, McCartney was uh, quite a, an aggressive player, too. He played a lot of notes. And, uh, but that's how pretty much I started like that and just came through and got into everybody and everything. Ron, how about you? Really, the very first riffs that I learned when I started taking lessons, I remember the very first thing I was shown by my guitar teacher, which is just to get down a swing feel and, and everything was just this. distinctly having trouble lifting this finger where I just kept going one and two notes here <laughs> and just developing the coordination to go at the very beginning. Keep that going. Keep on going. started like the riff that made me want to play the gateway drug was Taxman by the Beatles um, I was like eight and this was uh, this was huge <laughs> um, and that's the first thing I took like my first guitar lesson teach me Taxman and I didn't really know that was the bass part <laughs> like no one really brought that up. I didn't figure that out for a long time, uh, that that's the bass part. Though George does double it later later in the song. But my first riff I learned was the bass part for Taxman. And then after that, Day Tripper and well, all the other great Beatles riffs. There were a lot of kids in my neighborhood or teenagers that were older than me at the time. And they were coming up on like that 60s hard rock stuff. And there was a, a few garage bands that played around and, and they were older than me, and I used to go sit and watch them jam in their garages, and uh, one of the guys across the street showed me the Cream riff for Sunshine of Your Love, which was the first hard rock riff that I ever played, and I, it just felt so cool. I played it over and over and over, you know, and I haven't played it in years, but it, I think this is the right key. <laughs> And I just played that over and over and over on my acoustic guitar. It didn't sound as cool as that. I didn't have an electric yet, but that, that's the first riff. You know, I remember hearing after that uh, bands like Zeppelin, you know, and the Stones. Uh, I think one of the first Stones riffs I learned was Jumpin' Jack Flash. <laughs> jam that, you know, and in our garage bands. Love the sound that Elmore James had when he did that. Right? I mean, that was his famous lick. Long cold winter. We're here on Gear Factor. We, we love talking to folks about, especially legends like yourself, about you know that first riff you heard when you were a little kid. That so you saw someone playing guitar and said, "I want to be on that stage. I want to do what they're doing." Yeah, it was Mark Bolin. Bolin and just the hair and the image and it was you know he really was in, in my eyes the, the the grandfather of the glam rock movement right. you know and i was thinking this is cool i have an older sister i thought i can go upstairs and wear my sister's clothes and and get a guitar and grow my hair so 
I did grow my hair. I eventually did get a guitar. I fortunately for the world, I did not fit into my sister's clothes. So <laughs> <laughs> I was spared that. We were all spared that embarrassment. But uh, that was what really did it for me. That was my light bulb moment. I was probably about nine years old. Um, I was on a show called Top of the Pops on BBC. And um, from that moment on, I just wanted to be a guitar player. The first riff I ever learned was probably Folsom Prison Blues by Johnny Cash. Uh, with distortion, it sounds a little weird, but it's like... If, any, if every electric guitarist is honest, it's, it's either smoke on the water or wild things. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember which around the chords are. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, 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 D, D, E, E. Oh, but, yeah. You're going to drop D. <laughs> I didn't really get in the guitar for about a year after owning one. Got into it when I figured out tabs, because something about being able to just see the numbers and learning a song by a band that I listened to was like crazy for me. It was like a huge revelation in guitar playing for me. Chords were boring, tabs were fun. And the first thing I learned was um, this Blue Oyster Cult riff. <laughs> Uh, the first riff I ever learned, it's a really, really uh, silly one. Here's the thing, when I, when I um, first started playing guitar, I was 10 or 11, and uh, I, I didn't, I don't know, I never watched this show, it was called Peter Gunn, and it's super simple. It's just... And that's all I learned, and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm a guitar player. <laughs> like, it was immediately, I was like, that's it. Now I gotta start a band, and I did. But it, yeah, I was told I couldn't play guitar, and I had to play drums. <laughs> Some of my favorite riffs to play while learning the guitar were actually more classic rock. Leonard Skinner was a huge influence to me. What we're actually going to talk about is top five sitcom themes. My favorite show was, um, let's see. No, how that go? That's good. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> that's bunch. great. That, bunch. That's great. That's what great. What else is there? Um, oh, here's a good cable esque one. Um, how's it go? <laughs> that's awesome. Coming up, White Snake, <laughs> Susie Top. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, and, uh, Mick Co Kurt Loader, yeah, 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 ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Kurt Loader with yeah, Kurt Loader, news. yeah. Here's, here's a random, random one. Old school, old school. Wednesday, let's see if you know this one. <laughs> Curveball. Okay. Curveball. Animated. Oh. Animated. Let's see. Let me think. Um, what was, oh, well, the most famous. <laughs> Actually, the very first thing that I ever learned was Sweet Dreams. And, and this one, this one, they had this one too that was pretty amazing. Last Train to Clarksville. You know, of course, the Beatles and Stone. You know that. You know that. That all came across on a tele, on, on television, on Ed Sullivan. But when I heard my, you know, the Monkees were a huge, huge band on TV then back then, and um, when I heard them play, I, blaringly loud after school one day, I was like, I mean, it was pretty badass. I made it to junior high school, and. Uh, I wasn't really doing anything musically, and I said, they had this orchestra, and my friends goes, why don't you come out, come out to the orchestra? And I said, well, I don't really play anything. You know, so I saw the violin, I said, okay, how about the violin? So I sat, you know, I started, I looked at the violin, I picked it up, and I started, and then I was like the last violin, and then I studied it, I started working at it, so in like three weeks, I became like the first violin. So I obviously had musical aptitude, and. You know, the violin was really, you know, okay for, for a while, but then I noticed that, you know, you know, if you played guitar, you'd be very popular with the ladies. And so that's what really drove me to pick up a guitar, because the violin, you know, that's the best one. That one, Painted Black. All those, all those early Beatles stuff was amazing. <laughs> Twist and Shout. Probably the first, I, literally the first song I probably learned to play was Creedence Clearwater Revival, Proud Mary. Um, which, funny enough, kind of almost sounds like a Fogat song. Yeah. You know, uh, I can't remember how it goes, but it's like the walking bass line, you know, is kind of the, you know, it's the simplest. You know, these two simple blues lines. I think it's like called Boogie Woogie, but it's, uh, you know, a pretty common sounding progression. Uh, it goes like this. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I would just, like, play that uh, over and over again. The first riff I ever learned was... It's probably the first thing I learned, probably. Riff, guitar riff. Um, uh, but I still love that stuff. Um, I've worked a lot of uh, uh, those kinds of ideas into the Melvin songs, which I don't think people have ever picked up on what a massive... Uh, Chuck Berry rockabilly uh, uh, influence we really had, uh, that, that kind of stuff has really had on our music. I think the first riff that made me want to pick up a guitar was probably something by Chuck Berry. I'd seen, you know, Martin McFly kicking an amp over on stage on Back to the Future and thought it was the coolest thing at the time. But I remember um, seeing um, in that Hail Hail Rock and Roll film, like him and Keith Richards fighting over how to play Carol, I think. Um, and that's like... Yeah, okay. uh, that could 
and stuff. Probably the first song that I heard that made me want to play guitar was um, Going Up Around the Bend by Creedence Clearwater Revival. And I was pretty young, like, I don't know, seven years old maybe. And I didn't understand at the time that, uh, you know, when you heard a song, you were hearing somebody playing guitar, making that sound, and then the drums were making that sound, and the bass was making that sound, and I didn't really understand that. I just heard it as a song. But when I heard Going Up Around the Bend, for some reason, that little intro riff made me realize, like, oh, that's a guitar doing that, making that sound. And um, I didn't learn this riff till way later, but it was this little riff. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, just a light bulb went off in my head. What was the riff before you were a guitar player that made you want to pick up the guitar before you were a guitar player? Um, I, probably this was the first thing I ever figured out on guitar. So. The monkeys, <laughs> the Beatles. Yeah. Oh, see, <laughs> that sounds like the be it sounds like the monkeys. <laughs> Same there you time go. period. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then you know that I realized that that was um, yeah kind of a surf inspired way, yeah. and then I started to you know, learn something. Just like single note stuff. Yeah, yeah. And and, and that those were also the first songs you learned as as well when you picked up the guitar. Uh, it definitely started with Beatles songs. Beatles songs. Yeah, oh. that tune, Day Trip, that Day Tripper. Yeah. Um, yeah, just real basic things, you know, to learn chords. Awesome. Yeah, stuff like, yeah, let it be. G, A minor, F. And it was just great for that type of stuff. Prince is probably one of the best rhythm guitar players to ever live. Well, there's this Prince one. From Kiss. Uh, I'm a big Stones fan, so I, I like what Keith and Ronnie do in their playing. Um, I think Keith's probably considered the rhythm guitar player there, but um, he's, he's probably my favorite. Uh, my first question is, before you guys were even guitar players, what was the song, the riff, the performance that made you want to pick up the guitar and come down the rabbit hole oh so deeply? So, uh, let's start with my man, Mr. Jared James Nichols. Give it up for Jared James hey, Nichols. Hey, yes. You know it was easy for me. It was, uh, if I leave here tomorrow, Freebird, right? It was Freebird. That was the solo. I heard that, and I was like, what is that? I want to do that. That was the solo for me. What about, what about you? I don't know. For some reason, I heard that song by Prince. Uh, I would never want to take the place of your man. Do you guys know that song? It's uh... You know, uh, it's a great song. It's a really cool guitar solo, and in my mind, in my mind, for some reason, I could just hear, for some, I could see the notes on a guitar fretboard, and I could see that he was traveling up, like basically a major. It's so good. But it was this big delay kind of solo where he's doing this big question answer thing, and I remember being like 11 years old and listening to that song go, that. That is one of the coolest guitar songs I've ever heard in my life. Go back and check it out. I Could Never Take the Place of Your Man by Prince. It's not heavy metal. It's not dark. There's no murder involved in any of this, the lyrics. It's very romantic. There's a lot of heartache involved, but it's a cool song. Nice. Well, I remember being a little kid and hearing Santana for the first time. And uh, when Carlos uh, played an SG back in the day, that was my favorite Carlos sound was when he was playing a Gibson yeah, SG. SG. Yeah, I agree. And uh, uh, back then, you know, you didn't have MTV or whatever, so you couldn't really see. But I just was haunted by the way Carlos did this little. Oh, yeah. 
that, that just gave me goosebumps. Yeah. And uh, then when he goes into... That was it for me as a kid. When I was real little, I remember hearing that, and it freaked me out. I was always really drawn. I was drawn to songs as much as I was guitar playing. So uh, the song I couldn't wait to learn, I think it really inspired me to drive my parents crazy, like I have to have, a, <laughs> have an electric guitar. Was, uh, was, this, was Taking Care of Business by Bachman Turner Overdrive, you know? <laughs> You know, three chords, the whole song. And I figured it out, and I worked it up with my, uh, my little b garage band. We were all like 14. And all the girls started talking to me as soon as I started playing that riff. So I want to make it official. I'm eternally indebted to Randy Bachman for writing that song. So in my early years on the guitar, uh, I didn't learn like solos note for note. I would kind of learn licks here and there or certain techniques and then try to incorporate those into my playing. Uh, but when I started attending Boston Arts Academy, I had a great teacher there, a good buddy of mine to this day, Colin Sapp. Shout out to Colin. Uh, he, he taught me you know, a lot of jazz solos. We had to do like jazz competitions. So we'd have to learn that shit note for note. Uh, and it was super challenging. Um, but I learned a ton doing that. I learned a lot about phrasing. Um, I learned a lot about technique and you know, obviously just like the swing feel. So one of the first solos I learned was uh, Wes Montgomery's Four on Six. Yeah, I think that's the first time uh, West Montgomery solo has ever been played on a Jackson Warrior before. Um, yeah, I love West Montgomery. Um, just an amazing guitar player, timeless. Um, he had so many cool lines, so many cool ideas. And you know, the fact that he was playing on that shit with his thumb is just like mind blowing. Mm -hmm. 